I'm praying right now, God, if we have any plans or world evangelism, God, that we can begin to give it, oh God, into your name. We can begin to give it into the overwork seed, the, the overseas works, oh God, and we can begin to see your name glorified as souls get saved out there. God, Lord, I pray that you bless the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Look what the Lord has done. And look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body, touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise his name. He saved me just the same. Come help me praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, if you want to turn to Romans 13, Romans 13. <laughs> Romans 13. We will be watching some more. Um, <laughs> Presky videos, because those are good. It's just so many good ones that I just want to show you. But I will preach to that. Romans 13, and we're going to be reading verses 11 through 14. Amen. I'm sure everyone has seen somebody, especially in the summertime, and we look at people. I mean, everywhere we go, we, we, we see people, right? We see them walking up the street in the grocery store, on our jobs, in our neighborhoods, in our families. We see people. And, and one thing that stands out about people all the time is the way they dress, right? Um, in the summertime, a lot of times I, <laughs> I look at people and the way they dress, uh, Mainly females, I'm sorry to tell you. <laughs> and it's like, put on some clothes. Amen. Why did you come out the house looking like that? Right? And I'm not trying to be rude. It's just things are changing. Right? It's like, no. Please put on some clothes. Someone once said, clothing should be a frame for your face, right? In other words, you shouldn't dress in a way that draws attention to your body. It needs to be a, you know, respectful. Cover up yourself. Put on some clothes for goodness sake. I want to preach a message entitled, put on some clothes. <laughs> Romans 13, 11 through 14. This is the ESV version. It says, besides this, you know the time. That the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. Amen to that. It says in verse 12, the night is far gone. The day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies or drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy. It says in verse 14, but put 
on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Amen. God, we just thank you. We pray, God, that you would open our hearts and our understanding, oh God, into your word. God, help us to embrace all that will be spoken this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Put on some clothes. Goodness. Let's look at Nagy. To understand the deeper meaning of what nakedness is, we must go back to the point where humanity became unclothed. And we get a profound insight into this in Genesis chapter 2, where the Bible says that Adam and Eve were physically naked, but they were not ashamed. They weren't ashamed. They were not ashamed and had no problem being physically naked naked because their covering was spiritual. Think about this. Meaning something spiritual covered their nakedness. We can come to this conclusion. Why? Because after they sinned and severed their spiritual connection to God, they saw their physical nakedness. After they sinned. And the reason they didn't see their nakedness before they sinned is because their nakedness goes beyond the reality of just the physical realm. It goes beyond the reality of what you see. So what that means is that because of sin, you are truly and absolutely naked and unclothed when your spiritual covering is removed. When it's gone. We read in Genesis 3 7. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covered. Only after they sinned did they see their nakedness because their covering was removed. You? No spiritual covering. And inarguably, their covering was the presence of the Almighty God in their lives. This was their covering. Psalms 91.4. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. buckler, buckler. Deuteronomy 33.12. Let the beloved of the Lord rest secure in him. For he shields him all day long, and the and the one the Lord loves rests between. But when the darkness of sin gets a foothold in your life, that covering begins to come on. And this is a principle throughout the Bible, and it plays out through Scripture. And again, this started back in Genesis three eight. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. It says they hid themselves because their spiritual covering was removed. It says in Isaiah 59 too. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. We see when the nation of Israel, or rather Judah, sinned against God and they went into captivity, the Bible tells us why in 2 Kings 24 20. It says, These things happen because of the Lord's anger against the people of Jerusalem and Judah until he finally banished them from his presence and sent them into exile. So they were banished from the presence of God. And in the New Testament, the word of God says in Ephesians 4.18, they are darkened in their understanding and separate from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their heart. When night falls and the darkness comes, 
The natural thing to do is unclothe yourself and palsy. When you go home tonight, you're going to You going to sleep? That's the natural thing to do. Well, guess what? It's no different when you willingly give place to sin in your life. Darkness comes. You begin to unclothe yourself from the presence of God, and then a spiritual sleep comes over. This is why scripture warns us in verses 11 and 12. Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is to us, is nearer to us than when we first believed. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. Let's look secondly at scantily clad. How many of you ever heard that term? Scantily clad. That's a whole so when we serve God, our continual desire must be to remain clothed in his presence at all times and never become scantily clad. I'm sure someone is asking, what the heck is scantily clad? So by definition, scantily clad means to be inadequately clothed. A synonym or synonyms for it is half clothed, underclothed, unclothed. So continuing with the illustration when the night comes and the darkness falls, again, the natural thing to do is get comfortable, take off your clothes, and slip into your PJs or whatever you sleep in. That's the natural thing to do when it's bedtime and the moon is up and the sun is down. So this term, scantily clad, mainly refers to people who are dressed inadequately and inappropriately in public. But to put it another way, they wear in public what should only be worn in the confines of their home or their bed. They come out in public and people say they're scantily clad. They dress totally inappropriately. And you've seen them in the grocery store, walking down the street, and on the Hollywood red carpet. Their dress is scantily clad and frankly disgusting. And they're not the least bit ashamed to be wearing next to nothing in public for all to see. They just let it all hang out. And the question I have is, why? <laughs> this world has come a long way from Adam and Eve. Because the Bible says that at least when they realized that they were naked, they became ashamed. But sin has run amok so much in this world that no one cares or even are ashamed of their nakedness anymore. No one. And that's in the physical sense and in the spiritual sense as well. Jesus warns those in church out of Revelation 3, 16 through 17. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. This is Jesus Christ talking. He says, you think you got your life together with everything in order, and you think that you're all that in a bag of hot Cheetos, but you need to put on some clothes. This is what he's saying. Put on, put, cover it up. Put on some clothes for goodness sake. Because your self-righteousness and your self-aggrandizing delusion is making me sick. And the truth is that if we're not careful, we too can gradually have the clothing of God's presence removed from our lives if we're not careful. And we can become scantily clad 
and our own self-righteousness and self-worth. Isaiah 64, 6 says this. But we are all like an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. All of our self-righteousness in the presence of God's holiness is like putting a brand new clean white suit on a man with leprosy. All that nasty smelly pus and bodily fluid will bleed right through that clean white suit and it will become defiled and useless. And that's your self-righteousness in the presence of a holy God. And Jesus says, it makes him sick. It makes him sick. Our opening scripture says this in, in verse 12 to 13. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy. And he's talking to the church, by the way. And on this list, you can easily include self-righteousness. You can put it right there on that list of things that make Jesus Christ sick. Romans 10.3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God. There's a bunch of self-righteous religious folks in this world walking around scantily clad and naked. Don't be one of them. Don't be one of them. Be clothed. Let's look at it. Be clothed. Because the only way to cover your nakedness before God is to put on Christ. That's it. Before God. Finally, our text says in verse 14, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. So let's think back to the book of Genesis where the Bible says that Adam and Eve walked and talked with God in a strong relationship. Because before sin came into the picture again, the Bible says in Genesis 2.25, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. This is before sin, the, the sentence before. So think about this. They weren't ashamed before they sinned, because through a strong relationship with God, his presence comes. So the assumption is that the closer you are to God, through a relationship with Jesus Christ, the more clothed you are. The closer you are to him. Being clothed with Christ is making up your mind every day to pray to him, to live for him, and to walk with him. Being clothed with Christ is striving to know all that you can about him as you serve him. Everything. I'm not going to ask how many people read the Bible through yet. I want to keep hounding you about it. But you need to read the Bible through. From beginning to end. From cover to cover. Get a year Bible. It don't matter. Read the Bible through. And you should do it every year. You should do it every year. Read the Bible through. Because the closer you get to knowing who Christ is, the more covering you have. Because the more you know about a person and the closer you are to them in relationship, the greater are the chances that there will be no miscommunication, or misunderstanding that can create a wedge between you and them. 
Right? How many people ever misunderstood God because they didn't know his word? A lot, right? Lots of people. And it's no different with people as it is with God. But this is something you have to do. Because no one's going to do it for you. And you can have as much of God as you want. You can pray as much as you want. You can read and study as much as you want. You can serve and obey as much as you want. You can be clothed with Christ as much as you want. You can put on your spiritual burqa and hijab and be clothed with Jesus Christ from head to toe if you want. Because the way some people from, or some professing believers live before God makes you want to say, put on some clothes. Cover that up. <laughs> but we need to be like the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 61. 10. He says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As, I, as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and a bride adorns herself with jewels. So Isaiah says, God is coming. It's because of his relationship with God. The Bible says, blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed are they. There's a story in Zechariah 3, 1 through 4. This is what it says. Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was, was clothed with filthy garments. How many ever felt like they just, just filthy? Filthy before God. It says he was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you. I will clothe you with rich robes. So you have here Satan accusing you. God, they did this. They thought that. Their mind is filthy, God. The things they do is filthy. But you can go before God. You can go in the presence of your God because you have a relationship with him. And you can say, God, forgive me. And he was like, take that robe off of him, that filthy robe, and put a clean robe on. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Makes you clean and makes you whole. But this only comes when we walk with God in relationship. This is the only time this happens. Because the world is undone before God. But we are his children. Let us grow our relationship with him. Let's grow closer and closer to him. Let's have our spiritual hijab and burqa on. You know, everybody know what that is? I'll be, I'll be that one of them. Said, That's those Muslim things that come from head to toe. You can be that in the spiritual realm. You can really be that in the spiritual realm. Because God is your cover. He has your back. He's your covering. But we have to put on clothes. Amen. Let me have every head bowed, every eye closed. Praise God. This is something we have to do. This is something we have to strive at. This is our choice. We don't need to be walking around half-dressed. We need to put on Christ. Amen. It is a privilege being saved to be, be able to even do this. To put on Christ. What a privilege. It will answer a lot of questions if, if this is our attitude. It will answer a lot of questions and avoid a lot of misunderstandings 
if this is our attitude, to put on Christ. And we all can do a little better with it. You know? We don't want to be showing that shoulder or that too much leg in the presence of God. Cover yourself. Cover yourself. One of the signs of the times is that times is that people dress how they want. They, they, they're taking their clothes off. That's one of the signs of the times is, is that people don't want to be covered no more. They have no shame in their game. No shame. They do what they want to do, live how they want to live with no covering at all. Wide open before God. No shame facedness, nothing. But we are the people of God. We are the children of God. We have to make sure that we clothe and not get relaxed and uncovered. Amen. I want to open these altars for you. If you want to come pray. <coughs> I'm going to sing out this song. Uh, worship is not Worship is
Jesus who died, hallelujah. Jesus who died, now glorified.